Now to differentiate this with respect to x, I'm gonna call it y. So let, let y be equal to 2x squared plus 3 multiplied by sine x, sine 5x. And we need to differentiate this. So to differentiate this with respect to x, we're going to say that dy by dx is equal to, we're going to use product rule. Product rule tells us that we keep the first one. So we write about 2x squared plus 3. Then we multiply it by the derivative of the second one. When we differentiate sine 5x, we get differentiate sine, you get cos 5x. Then you multiply it by 5. Then you times it by 5. Plus, you keep the second one now, so keep the sine 5x. And then you multiply it by the derivative of the first one. Now, when we differentiate this up here, we differentiate 2x squared plus 3, we're going to get 4x. So now all that is left to do is simplify. But to simplify, we can write 5 times the 2x squared. That's going to give us 5 times 2 is 10. So we get 10x squared plus 5 times 3 is 50. So write it as 10x squared plus 50 multiplied by cos 5x plus no 4x sine 5x. This is now plus 4x sine 5x. That takes care of the first one. Nice and easy, soft. That takes care of part one. Now part B, part B is saying to us that we need to, we need to find the coordinates of all the stationary points of the curve. Find the coordinates of all the stationary points on the curve. And so what that means is we tell us that Y is equal to X cubed. Y is equal to X cubed minus five X squared. plus 3x plus 1, all right? And you want us to find the coordinates of the stationary points. So to find the coordinates of the stationary points, we know that a stationary point occurs when dy by dx equals zero. So first we need to find dy by dx. dy by dx is going to be equal to 3x squared minus 10x plus 3. And stationary points occur when dy by dx is zero. So we set this equal zero. Solving 3x squared minus 10x plus 3 equals zero, we can factorize it. In order to factorize it, what we're going to get is 3x and x. That looks like 3 and 1. Signs are the same, both of them negative. Right? And so the two points that we're getting is x is equal to 1 over 3, 1 upon 3, and x is equal to 3. So now we need to find the value for y. To find the corresponding value for y, we plug one over three into the original equation. Plugging one over three into the original equation, we're getting one over three cubed minus five times one over three squared plus three times one over three plus one. And so we get, that looks like one and 13 over 27, which is 40 over 27. So y is 40 over 27.
comma, we'll plug x as 3 up here to get 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 1. And this other point is y is negative 8. Y is negative 8. All right, nice and easy. Y is negative 8. Nice. So we can tell them that the stationary points are stationary points are 1 over 3, comma, 40 over 27, and this looks like 3, negative 8. Those are the stationary points. Nice and easy. We should be 40 over 27. Nice and easy. Those are the stationary points. Now it is saying now, if these are the stationary points, what next should we do? It says determine the nature of each stationary point. The nature of each stationary point is d2y by dx squared. That's the nature of each stationary point, d2y by dx squared. To find d2y by dx squared, it's gonna be 6x minus 10. 6x minus 10, that's the, liter, that's the second derivative. All right, so this is part two. All you're gonna do is plug in the x value at each stationary point into this. All right, so we can say at, at the point, at the point when x is one over three, what are we gonna get? When x is one over three, we're gonna see that d2y by dx squared is gonna be equal to, all we need to do is plug in one over three in this equation, and we're gonna get six times one over three minus 10, and that's gonna be equal to two minus 10, which is negative eight, which is less than zero, all right? And so what we're then saying is that one over three, 40 over 27 is a maximum point, all right? So we can then conclude that that is a max point. Then we're gonna plug in now at when x is three. When x is three, what we're gonna get is that d2y by dx squared d2y by dx squared is gonna be equal to x is three, six times three is 18, 18 minus 10 is eight, and eight is greater than zero. And so this is a minimum point, minimum point. Nice and easy, nice, easy, soft. That's a minimum point. Nice. So we can tell them this one, three, you can just go ahead and tell them one, three, that is a maximum point. And the three, eight is the minimum point. That's it. Nice and easy, soft. Now part C, part C says, a spherical volume of a balloon is four over three pi r cubed is filled at a rate of 200 centimeter cube per second. Calculate in terms of pi, the rate at which the radius is increasing when the balloon is 10. So they're asking us to calculate the rate at which the radius is increasing. So they're asking us to calculate dr by dt. Now dr by dt is gonna be equal to dr is gonna be equal to dr by something times something dt.
So now we need to find this. So now we need to find dr, but they give us a third variable, which is v. So we can find dr by dv times dv by dt. Now the question already give us dv by dt. It tell us dv by dt. It tell us that that is 200. This is clearly 200. This is dv by dt, 200. Then it need now dv by dr. dv by dr. dv by dr. dv by dr is equal to. Now we know v. v is 4 over 3 pi r cube. And so we can carry down the power to get 3 times 4 over 3 is just 4 pi r squared. So we get 4 pi r squared is dv by dr. And so dr by dt is dr by dv, which will be dr by dv is 1 over dv dr. So it's 1 over 4, 4 pi r squared times 200. That is dr by dt. And then all you have to do now is plug in r as 10, because it says put r as 10. So it works out to be 200 divided by 4 pi times 10 square, and 10 square is just 100. So this will give us dr by dt. dr by dt is, let's work that out, 200 divided by 4 times 10 square, that's a half. This works out to be a half or 1 over 2 pi. Works out to be 1 over 2 pi. And it's 1 over 2 pi. Radius is in centimeter. So it's 1 over 2 pi centimeter per second. Nice and easy. So. That's the solution. Now we can go to integration. Now we're at integration. Now we're carrying out integration. We're asked to evaluate the integral from pi by six, evaluate the integral from pi by six to pi by three, evaluate the integral of pi by six to pi by three of cos three theta. Cos three theta d theta. This is what we're asked to evaluate. Cos three theta, d theta, the integral from pi by six to pi by three of cos three theta, d theta. So we need to evaluate this integral. Now to integrate cos, when you integrate cos, you get sine. To integrate cos, you get sine three theta. Then you divide it by the derivative of three theta, which is three. And we're integrating from pi by six to pi by three. Nice. So all you have to do is plug in pi by three first. When you plug in pi by three, three times pi by three is just pi. So we get the sine of three times pi by three. Remember pi by three is really 60 degrees. Three times 60 is 180. The sine of 180 is zero. So this works out to be zero minus, you plug in pi by six now, which is 30. Three times 30 is 90. The sine of 90, the sine of 90 as we know it is one. So this works out to be zero minus one over three. So the answer is minus one over three. Nice and easy. Soft. Now the next part says now, a curve has equation which satisfies dy by dx 
is kx times x minus one. It says given that the, the gradient of the curve at two, three is 14, find the value of k. This was part A. Let's have a look at part B. So now, dy by dx is kx times x minus one. And they tell us that the gradient at two, three is 14. So they tell us that at two, three, at two, three, they're telling us that dy by dx is equal to 14. That's what they just told us, you know. And so what they're telling us then is k times x, k times x. So at two, three, what they're telling us then is k times x, k is, we don't know, so it's two k times, so let me say that implies, it's very good to say that implies, that implies two times k times, x is two again, two minus one is equal to 14. And so that or two minus one is one. And so what they're saying is two K is equal to 14. And so K is equal to seven. K is equal to seven. K is equal to seven. Next it says find the equation of the curve. Find the equation of the curve. To find the equation of the curve, now y is going to be equal to the integral of dy by dx. Since k is 7, y is equal to the integral of dy by dx. Now it's really 7x times x minus 1. So this is what we're integrating, seven X times X minus one. That is what Y will be. And so integrating this, we're pretty much integrating seven X times X minus one can be written as seven X squared minus seven X. This is what we're integrating. Now integrating this now, what we're gonna get is add one to the power Integrate seven x squared to get add one to the power to get cube divided by the power of three minus seven add one to the power to get x squared divided by the new power of two. Then we'll add our constant of integration. Now we need to find that constant of integration. To find this constant of integration, we know when x is two, y is three. So what we know then is three is equal to seven times two cube over three minus seven times two square over two plus k. So this will give us k. So we can use this equation now to solve for k. So let's navigate down or simplify down now our way to get k. Seven times two cube divided by three minus seven times. So answer minus, of course, seven times two square divided by two and we get four and two over three, we'll bring that over three minus our answer, I'm getting minus five over three. So that implies k equal negative five over three. Negative five over three. If k is negative five over three, then it is telling us that y is equal to seven x cubed y is equal to 7x cubed over 3 minus 7x squared over 2 
plus k and k is minus five over three. Nice and easy, soft. So plug in x as two, seven times two cubed divided by three minus seven times two square divided by two plus k Just to check that, when you plug in x as two, you need to get back y as three. So let's just check it again. Right here, if we were to plug in x in, as two in this equation, would we get y as three? Seven times two cubed divided by three minus seven times two square over two. Okay minus five over three. Yes, so this is indeed correct. So this equation is correct. All right, nice and easy. Soft, that takes care of part B. So this is the equation of the curve. Now part C. Part C asks us to find the volume of the solid enclosed by the region y equal x squared plus one rotated around the line x being zero and x being y. Now, first thing we need to remember is that volume is equal to pi times the integral of y squared dx. Volume is equal to the integral from a to b of y squared dx. That's the formula for volume. So what does that tell us? Then volume is equal to pi times the integral of, volume is equal to pi times the integral from zero to one of y square. Y square is gonna be x square plus one of square dx. This is volume, pi times the integral of x square plus one of square dx. So we work this out now, we're gonna get that volume is pi times the integral of from zero to one, first term square, which is x squared squared, which is x to the four, plus twice the product of the two, which is plus two x squared, plus second term squared, which is plus one. Nice and easy. This is how we get the volume. Nice and easy. So that's the volume. So the volume works out to be pi times. All you have to do now is integrate. So integrate by adding one to the power x to the fifth over five plus Add one to the power, we get two x cubed. Over three plus x. And we're going from zero to one. Now we don't even need to worry about the zero, just plugging in the one. So the volume is going to be plugging in one, you get one over five plus two over three plus one. So it's gonna be one over five plus two over three plus one. And that is giving me, I'm getting, that looks like 28 over 15. That's 28 total over 15 pi. That's the volume. Volume is 28 over 15 pi. It's 28 over 15 pi units cube. When you find volume, it's units cube. Nice and easy, soft.